What's up, Internet? We've talked about fitness trackers in the past, and one of the more popular lines is Fitbit's Charge line. And the latest in that series is the Charge 6. But you might be wondering, what's the difference between the 6, the 5, and the 4? Wonder no more, because that's what we're going to talk about this video. I've tried all of them. I've used all of those for several months each. So you might be able to save a few bucks if you go for an older generation which has the features you need compared to splurging a bit more on maybe the newer models which you don't really need. But what you probably need is a Windows activation code which you can get for cheap from our sponsor. So ka na ba sa unactivated Windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mula sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang umorder. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred pay pen pencil. Wala pang 5 minutes, may CDK ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sad and depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako, pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Alright, so the Charge is the most well-known line from Fitbit and we'll start with the oldest first, the Charge 4. Right off the bat, the GPS on this one is not that great. I had multiple times throughout my usual jog where the Fitbit would tell me and it would show up later on on the maps that it just lost connection to GPS and my location on the map would be like I'm teleporting through walls because suddenly I'm jumping from one location to another. This was consistent failure on the Charge 4. So if you want accuracy and you're in an urban environment, the Charge 4 might not be a good fit. Its screen is also not colored compared to the Charge 5 and Charge 6. Its charger is a different design. It's this claw-like thing which you have to really wrestle onto the Charge 4 before it charges properly. It doesn't have the ESD sensor or the thing that you pinch on the Charge 5 and Charge 6 to register how stressed you are. So there is a clear divide between the 4 and the 5 and the 6. What it does have going for it is that it's cheap now. You can probably find a good one still running that's second hand. Plus, it does the basic tracking functions well. Sleep, steps, heart rate, all of those things seem to register accurately enough while I was using the Charge 4. Now, I was using a second-hand Charge 4, but to be fair, its battery life was still decent. Plus, I'm not even a fan of the new sensors, like that stress sensor thing. I barely use it on the 5 and the 6. So actually, I was pretty happy with the 4. Plus, it has the niftiest animations. You know, the kind of notifications you get when you've hit 10,000 steps or some other kind of milestone during the day. The Charge 4 had the nicest animations between all three of the models that I tried. And I happily used the Charge 4 for more than a year actually. I didn't feel the need to upgrade. So if you're just looking for the basics, and I know GPS should be part of the basics, but for me it's more about tracking heart rate and steps rather than an accurate representation of where I went for my jog or my run. You can probably find a Charge 4 that's still ticking and save yourself a few bucks since it is an older model. Now, I'm not very careful with my fitness tracker, so my Charge 4 did get beat up a lot. Not a problem. It is sturdy enough to withstand most drops and accidental hits on the wall and things like that. No problem. On to the Charge 5, which I initially got first. My first Fitbit ever was a Charge 5. And it does have a color screen, it does have that stress detector, it does have a similar charger to the Charge 6. So there's a clean division between the 4 and the 5. A lot of new things got introduced into the 5 which aren't present in the 4 but which were carried on onto the 6. But the 5 was the one that I had for the shortest amount of time, less than 6 months. 
because its battery died on me. So I don't know if that's a failure of that particular product line or I just got a lemon. But in less than a year, my Charge 5 died on me. And that's when I decided to go with a secondhand Charge 4. But while I had the Charge 5, I used it every day, used it to track my sleep, my heart rate, and my daily exercise. Everything was top notch. So the analytics I was getting seemed accurate enough. I did not have a problem with the GPS, which I experienced later on with the Charge 4. It was nice to have a colored screen, but if that's what you're looking for, wait until I talk about the Charge 6. So as the Charge 5 was my first wearable, it was a good introduction to this kind of space. It was easy to set up and install, easy to link to my phone, easy to link to the Fitbit software. The software itself has evolved over time, so I won't really talk about it. The UI has gotten a little better in the latest incarnation, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. And for some reason, Fitbit doesn't allow you to have multiple trackers. So let's say if you have a smartwatch, which you want to wear to the office, so you look a bit more dressed up compared to a casual tracker, you have to manually add that smartwatch and remove the current fitness tracker that you're using even if they all connect to the Fitbit software. I know because I have a Pixel watch, it's a real pain in the ass, and that's true regardless of what product you use, whether four, five, or six. As mentioned, the five does introduce the new stress sense where you pinch the wearable and you have to keep it like that for three minutes and it tells you how stressed you are. On paper, it sounds interesting. In practice, I rarely use it. So on paper, the five sounds like a big jump from the four. Addition of a new sensor, better GPS, color screen. But, and moving now to the Charge 6, the Charge 6 has all of that, but basically better. So I'm currently using now a Charge 6. The screen is better. It seems a little bigger. It seems a little brighter. Plus, for sure, the animations are more fluid. This is the easiest Fitbit among the three that I've tried to read while you're running. The font seems a bit bigger. The animations, as I mentioned, the Charge 4 has the best animations. The Charge 6 animations are, you know, kind of like blah, but at the same time, they look the best on the screen. So far, it's also the best one to understand when you flip it and it actually shows the screen, like flip to look at, compared to the Charge 4 and the Charge 5. It has a stress sensor that we saw in the Charge 5. And its GPS is good. Again, no problems unlike with the Charge 4. But if you're choosing between the Charge 4 and the Charge 5, actually I would recommend the Charge 4 just because you can save a bit of money. I don't really care about the color screen. I don't really care about the stress sensor. But if you are already have a Charge 4 and are thinking of upgrading, then I don't see any reason why you would want to go with the 5. Skip to the 6, it has a better screen, better animation on the screen, and it's a lot easier to interact with the device when interacting with it is so fluid. The responses on the Charge 6, I'm not sure if they slapped in a better processor. Again, I don't like to look at specs. I go more on the actual user experience. My actual user experience with the Charge 6 is that it's very smooth. With the 4 and the 5, sometimes there's a little bit of a delay, sometimes you know, you would toggle the exercise on to walk or to run. It would take just a little bit of time to get there. Nothing like that with the Charge 6. Plus, the Charge 6 has the best battery life I've experienced with any of the three models. Like, I can go several days. And again, I'm a religious user, so it's basically on me all the time. And I do have a daily exercise, which I try to do. In spite of all of those things, I can go several days without charging the Charge 6. From a value standpoint, again, there are some things about the Charge 6 I don't really use, like the stress sensor. But the little things about it, I do like. Like the slightly bigger screen. It seems like a slightly bigger screen. It's snappiness in response time. All of those, I think, are worth a bit more. So if you're looking for a basic fitness tracker to track sleep, to track heart rate, to track steps, the Fitbit Charge line is sort of go-to. I mean, it's sort of top of mind to recommend. I would recommend the Charge 6 or the 4. The 5 was a transition device. A lot of new things added, which really got refined in the Charge 6. Not a lot of new things in the Charge 6, but since it's already there, you might as well get it to avail of all of those nice little add-ons that they were able to incorporate to streamline from the 5, which really added a lot of new things. If you just want to go super basic and you want to save a bit of money, then the Charge 4. To keep testing accurate, 
I did the same route for months on end with all of these fitness trackers. I wore them every day for sleep, walking around the house, walking around the mall and things like that. So I got a really good sense of all of them for their strengths and weaknesses. The most annoying really was the Charge 5. I mean, it was nice to have at the time, but it just died on me for no particular reason that I could tell. The battery just got wonkier and wonkier until finally it wouldn't turn on. And yes, I tried to restart it. Believe me, I tried. It just wouldn't work. So far though, I've had this for about a month. The Charge 6 is going pretty strong. And it is quite strong. I'm using the Charge 6 with a third-party strap, the kind of metal strap with a magnet clasp to it. And the problem with this third-party strap is that it would just detach itself by itself. So I would be sort of unslinging my backpack and whenever I would flip my wrist, it would detach by itself and the Charge 6, the actual unit, would fall to the ground. And there are no scratch. This happened multiple times and yet this thing is still ticking along just fine with no scratches. So if it's a direct drop, like flat face palm onto a hard surface, no problem. I've done it multiple times with this thing and so far so good. Now it could have been user error because when I flipped the strap around, like I attached it to different ends, it suddenly didn't have that unclasping by itself problem anymore. But the problem is it's very awkward now to take off. It's like the magnetic clasp is in the wrong place. All of that is as an aside though because it is a third-party strap not from Fitbit. So I'm not sort of including it in the how I felt about the Charge 4, Charge 5, or Charge 6. I would recommend though if you are going to use a fitness tracker, I do prefer these kind of metal straps over the rubber things that usually come with a fitness tracker. I think they just look a bit more subdued, so they blend in more to your outfit if you're going to be using it every day. Plus the feel on my skin, I don't know, rubber just feels icky over time. The metal, you know, feels natural, it doesn't feel too cloying or damp. You know, I'm in the Philippines, tropical climate, things get damp quite quickly. The metal seems to allow my skin to breathe more. So whatever your fitness tracker, if you're going to be wearing it for extended periods, I do kind of recommend this metal strap mesh thing. As frequent viewers of the channel know, Airflow is king. That allows you to do that over the default rubber straps that come with a lot of the fitness trackers. But that's it. Between the 4, the 5, and the 6, I would recommend the 4 or the 6. So if you're one of the normal PC guys who watches the channel, please do try to get out more. Alaga natin yung health natin. I know several hour gaming sessions really feel good, but keeping yourself healthy so that we can play more games is important also. Thanks for watching. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up-to-date yung inventory dun. Kung in-stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days, magkita tayo sa shop.